Now that the UCAS window has closed, if you have just submitted your medicine or dentistry application, it's now time to shift focus and start looking towards interviews. So in this video that I'm about to show you, this is a lesson from a brand new course that we've released. It's actually a free course directed at parents to help them teach their children or their students if they're teachers for how to ace the interviews and turn that interview offer into an actual offer of a place at university. Either if you have a parent that you want to give them this so that they can support you with the application, make sure that you show them this and sign them up to the course. Again, there are absolutely no catches, completely for free just to help them support you with your application. But otherwise, this video should help you from now until your interview, draw a timeline for how to prepare, make sure that you're methodical about it and do it slow and steady so that it's not stressful, but also so that you do the best performance possible to secure that place. So enjoy the lesson, stick around for the end because I'm gonna give you some more free resources that are gonna help you nail your interview. Otherwise, Enjoy. Welcome back and uh, well done for making it this far. We're almost there now, but we're gonna talk about one of the most important and certainly the final hurdles in this application process, which is the interview. Now, as the final hurdle, it's really important not to take interviews lightly. So as you'll have heard me say before, that interviews is one of those areas again where people underestimate its importance or how to prepare for it. I really want to get out of this hacking mentality that people think that they can just turn up for two weeks before the interview, cram and try and kind of blag their way through it. That is not the ethos that we want to do. And when we're training our students at Future Doc, so again, it's back to that mentality of becoming the kind of person that will make a great doctor or dentist. And when we train our students at Future Doc, we're elevating them and transforming them into the kind of person that they just turn up at interview and you can tell that they're the real deal. And it's really hard to turn them down to offer them a place because like I say, they have become that person that is going to go on to make a fantastic doctor or dentist. So before we go into the different interview styles, let's take a step back and globally look at what interviews are trying to do. Once you've gone through all the process of the application, as we said, the interview is the final hurdle to help people understand whether you are the kind of person or your child is the kind of person that they should offer a place to. And interviews are essentially checking four things. The first is to check that the student understands the career, they're going in with their eyes open and they know exactly what it is they're letting themselves in for. The second is that they're testing whether the student has the traits and the skills required, at least at a foundational level, to go on to be a great doctor or dentist. Now here they're not expecting you to be the finished article, but what they are expecting is that you have at least the seedlings of those traits and skills that they can nurture then to be in full bloom by the time that the student reaches the end of the course and is and has graduated as a doctor or dentist. The third is to verify who they see on the application is actually what they're like in real life. A lot of people embellish things or say things that aren't necessarily true. They're just checking to make sure that that student is who they say they are. And then finally, they want to test the applicant's dedication. Medicine and dentistry are typically lifelong vocations and they want to see that people have the grit, the determination, and just the general gumption to stick through the degree and then the, the career and the subsequent years that ensue. Now when interviewing, there are broadly two styles. The first is a panel interview, which is, as the name suggests, you typically are in front of a number of people from the university. Typically, it goes one clinical person, so somebody who's working as a doctor in hospital, one academic, so a doctor that is also a researcher, and then typically a third person, which could be a lay person. But it could be anything from two to four people. Typically, it doesn't vary from that in, in the panel interviews. And essentially, it's a chat for about 30 to 40 minutes, and they will it will just be a long conversation, um, free form almost, with a series of things that they'll want to ask and test. The second type is called MMI, or multiple mini interviews. And as the name suggests, it is a circuit of several stations that each one is independent from the other, so do, scoring badly in one will not affect the next one. And that is in a way to try and help people independently score highly across the board and not be affected by one particular bad situation that threw them. And in a moment, I'm gonna go into each of those in a bit more depth to help you understand exactly how they work. Now, during COVID, all of these interviews went online. And since, a lot of people have stuck to the online format purely for convenience and for many other reasons. However, some have gone back to in-person and many universities have flip-flopped between the two year on year. So I won't place any list for which ones do online and which ones do in-person because it does change pretty much every year. However, the only thing I will say is that some universities that went to online have since stayed online and have publicly come out and said that that is what they're going to stick to, again, because of many reasons, one of them being convenience. Now, what happens on the day of the interview is somewhat random and they can ask 
almost anything. However, there are a set of themes that do recur and you can almost guarantee that some of these will crop up every single interview. Now, here are some of the most common ones and they form the bulk of what we teach on our online course because that is probably what will cover 80 to 90% of the interview questions. The rest will be around kind of them as an individual or you as an individual and also maybe around kind of what's happening currently in the news or articles that you've read or maybe some things like a book that you might have wrote about in your personal statement and they will ask you to go in a little bit more depth about that and have an intelligent discussion on that subject. So now we'll dive into the individual interview types and we'll start with MMI. Like I said, it's in the name, it's several stations being tested of different things at each one. Now, typically in a circuit, students will go around and they'll rotate through a set of stations, typically no more than 10, usually at minimum six, so somewhere in between sometimes, and they're usually around eight minutes. Can sometimes be up to 10, but again, usually no more than 10. Typically in a interview circuit, there will probably be at least one rest station, sometimes two, depending on the, the size of it. And again, they can be online. Normally when it's in person, it's either a corridor with lots of rooms and you just rotate and go around the circuit, or it could be uh, one open room and you go around different stations which are in the open and it is a very hectic and loud room, I can assure you when that happens. However, when it's online, it will be on something like Teams or Zoom and instead of you rotating physically through the circuits, you just stay where you are and the circuits rotate through you. So for MMIs, the station types that come up often are role play, professional judgment, prioritization, giving instructions, calculation and data interpretation, and problem-based learning. And the kind of skills that these stations will test are communication skills, critical thinking, decision-making, ethics, knowledge of important topics, and keeping your cool under pressure. Now, some ways that students can stand out at MMI interview is firstly to be confident, but not arrogant. Often, sometimes questions aren't clear, so asking them to clarify the question is a great sign of maturity and also puts you in much better stead to answer the question that's been asked. Another tip on top of that is to listen intently to the wording used in the questions. There will often be clues or even cues that prompt by the interviewer when they are hinting towards what you they, they're getting at and what they want from you. Make sure to show your skills of empathy and compassion because MMIs are designed specifically to test communication skills around those traits. A great companion of confidence is to not second guess your answers. A lot of the questions will be opinion based and as long as you can deliver a sensible answer backed up with some reasonable logic then they will sometimes push back and they just want to see if they can shake your opinion. Now unless they give you a very solid counter argument and you kind of take that on board and say actually based on what you said I could see why you would say this and maybe that's made me rethink my answer. Unless they do something like that it's really important to show that you have conviction and stick to your guns when you have an opinion on something. Finally I I would say don't be tempted to prepare answers in advance. One of the key things of why we have such good conversion of students going to interview and then getting an offer is because we teach them to be prepared but not rehearsed. That means that you, instead of having a set script that you've memorized and you're trying to crowbar into certain situations, it's all about just having the underlying knowledge and understanding the key points that you need to cover and then adapting those to the question that's being asked. So my four biggest tips for doing well at MMI interviews are firstly, relate the answers back to medicine or dentistry. So when they ask a question about work experience or certain traits, it's always good to relate that experience or that trait that you've gained back to why it will make you a great doctor or dentist. The second thing is to have a really good understanding of ethics. A lot of questions might be on the subject of work experience or confidentiality, team working, but a lot of the time they will relate back to an ethical conundrum. So having a really solid understanding of the principles of medical ethics and everything around it will stand you in very good stead for answering questions. Again, the third is confidence. It's about being confident but not arrogant, but as we said before, confidence and just having people believe in what you say translates really nicely to a doctor or dentist when they're trying to explain a treatment plan to a patient and everyone knows what it's like to have had a medical professional speak to them and you really believe in what they're saying and that gives you confidence in undertaking the plan. And then the final thing is just to remember that one station doesn't affect the other. It's really important to develop that skill of if something doesn't go to plan in one station, just to dust yourself off, take a deep breath, and then the next one is a new slate and just start again 
don't be affected by previous ones because a lot of the time people can just go on a bad streak just by one bad station and that's really how they fail it's not that station that's failed them it's the subsequent poor performance because they've been shook by that original one that didn't go well that has led to an overall bad performance and resulted in them not securing a place or an offer but like i say the confidence will be gained from having a really solid understanding of all of that material that i talk about in the online course those 12 modules that we cover ethics of course being one of the most important ones and there's a really good framework there for understanding exactly how to approach any medical ethics scenario and there's a video that i'll link to in the description below for exactly how to go about that that's on my youtube channel so now let's go on to look at what we'd call the traditional interview style which is panel interviews now as i said it's a 20 to 40 minute chat usually with three people like i say sometimes as few as two sometimes as many as four or five but essentially it's a them just Having a chat with you, it's free form. They'll ask you some questions. Uh, they might check uh, some things about your personal statement or even maybe run some ethical scenarios by you and see how you respond to them. So when you're interviewed by a panel, it's usually a mix of junior doctors, medical students sometimes, nurses, or even a lay person. As we said, it's more of a conversation where you'll be able to elaborate on your answers, highlighting your strengths, your weaknesses, and it will give you a lot more opportunity than you did in the MMI. So let's talk through some tips for how to do well at panel interviews specifically. The first thing I would say is to have a really good understanding of your personal statement. They could ask you anything that you've written on there. Anything that's gone on there is fair game. So be prepared to have an intelligent discussion about even the smallest thing that's been mentioned. Second is to do your research. Understand what the medical school is looking for. Every single medical school will on their site say the kind of person that they are looking for to apply to that university. So have that at front of mind and orientate any answer to include some of those traits and qualities that they want to see in their future doctors or dentists. Also do your research and make sure you understand the course. They will have their own style of teaching and their ways of doing things. And it's important to show that you understand that and kind of explain why you would relate to that kind of teaching and why you're the kind of person that would thrive at their university. Finally, if it is going to be a virtual interview, just practice using the technology. Get used to doing these things virtually. I always say it's best to practice in person and that translates a lot easier to doing it virtually rather than the other way around. But silly things like understanding the technology, not using a platform that you've never used before. If it is gonna be on a new platform, just practice with it so that you're not doing silly things, clicking silly buttons that's gonna throw you off and just hinder the progress of the interview. Now for graduate interviews, it is pretty much all of what we've said, but just the level and the bar is much higher. You will probably get some questions as a grad about why you've come to medicine or dentistry at this stage of life and why you didn't do it earlier on, but that's absolutely fine, that's not wrong, it's just understanding the steps that you've taken in life or the journey that you've been on that's got you to this stage. And then another really important thing is around affordability. When people are applying as grads, there is it's very different, they have different responsibilities. Life is not exactly the same as somebody who's come straight out of school and is going to university at the age of 18 or 19. So they want to make sure that you have the maturity to cope with all the extra responsibility and you are able to support yourself while you're there. And then finally, we have the dreaded Oxbridge interviews. Now, to this day, they are still panel, they do not do MMI and obviously, Oxbridge don't do dentistry, so this is purely for medicine. Now really the main theme across these two universities and how they interview is that they have three things that they're testing. Firstly, they want to see your problem solving ability and they will ask you a question that might be quite difficult, might be quite complex, and they want to see you thinking out loud, so talking through your logic, through how you answer this problem. The second kind of coincides is that they want to see that you can confidently handle uncertainty. They will keep pushing and asking you deeper and deeper questions until they reach the point where they can see that that is the limit of your knowledge. They're not testing to see just how deep your knowledge goes and how intelligent or knowledgeable you are. They want to see, once they've reached that point where you don't understand something or you don't know something, how you handle that. Do you handle it with curiosity and you want to find out more and you're uh, keen to, to find the answer? Or on the other hand, do you choke and get all flustered? The final thing is that it is always going to be very science orientated. So it is nothing that you shouldn't have come across before in A-level and GCSE and often Often they will ask very technical and detailed questions about it and they just want to basically check your scientific understanding and sometimes again they will always push you to the point where you don't know stuff and they might even say 
what, how do you not know this? You were uh, you were taught it at A level or GCSE, and it's kind of them again just seeing how you respond to being critiqued in that way. Supplement your knowledge with extra reading because as they are a research heavy course in both Cambridge and Oxford, they may want to see that you've read some articles or something to back up a subject, and that there will be some academic chat around an article that you may have stated that you've read, or they may ask you directly at interview. It's often not about what you know, it's about how you respond to those types of questions. And finally, let's just go through some general tips that are gonna put applicants in a very good stead to make a good impression on the interview panel or on the MMI examiners. The first thing is just to make it easy for the person to give you good marks. So have a structured approach. On our course, we have several structures that people can use, but choose one that you like and stick to it. Be clear, concise, and to the point. No waffling, it's a conversation, not a presentation. The second point is to use real world examples. So something that's true and interesting. No hyperbole, certainly no lying, no cliches. And really the cure for all of that is to just be authentic. Again, always relate the answers back to why they would make you a good doctor or dentist. Don't be overly arrogant or unenthusiastic or bored. Those are real big pet peeves of interviewers and certainly when I interview people and I sit on the panels, it is something that really irks me. So enthusiasm, but not arrogance. Another pet peeve to avoid is don't skirt around answers. Be direct, we don't want any politicians answers. There are, there's not much time, at MMI certainly not, but even in the panel, you don't have that long to showcase how great of an applicant you are. So get to the point, don't skirt around answers, just answer them directly. Directly. And that way they can ask you more and they can get more of a feel for you as a student and all your strengths. The final tip I would say is to film yourself because there are a lot of quirks and little things that you don't realize, filler words, ticks, verbal ticks, all these things that just by seeing yourself a couple of times on camera, answering questions and doing it in a real scenario, maybe you get someone to come and do a proper mock interview on you. That way you will very quickly uh, shed a light on it and it's very easy to eliminate once you have that awareness. So there we have it, a whistle stop tour of interviews. But remember the primary thing is about raising yourself to the kind of person that is just going to be a really good applicant presented in front of the interviewers. Of course it's really important to have all of that baseline knowledge and and there is a lot to get through, but it's really important to have a reliable resource to teach all of that information and make sure that it is front of mind when interviewing. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. If you want access to the full course, I recommend that you check out this video here for where to access it. Or if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one help with your interview to kind of get over that final hurdle and make sure you convert that opportunity into an offer, check out this video here for how the Future.Program can help you with your application.